Well, it's a beautiful morning, and it's uh, very great to be back on your screen. Uh, it's time for us to look through the papers this morning. We call it Off the Press. Ezekiel Yaitok is on standby. He joins us via Zoom. Ezekiel, it's good to have you join us once again. Always a pleasure and a delight. Thanks for having me. All right, then uh, let's start off with uh, the leadership newspaper. has been made available by a paper vendor. Uh, on the leadership, in final outing, President Mohamed Buhari seeks pardon for Nigeria and pledges credible elections in 2023. You also find courts cannot force lecturers to work, says student, uh, following you know the ASU strike and all of the court injunctions. However, another uh, header says Supreme Court short of eight justice. Uh, that's what the CGN is quoted to say. And that's it this morning on the Leadership newspaper. Let's go to the next paper uh, in tow uh, from the Leadership, moving on uh, to the punch this morning. Of course, uh, a big picture right there, a Nigerian leader, uh, President, or should I say Nigerian President, Mohamed Buhari, um, addressing the United Nations General Assembly. It's a long text of his speech made available by the State House. Uh, interesting to see. But the lead story, uh, IU must go. PDP calls emergency meeting over governors, others gang up. And uh, Wiki's uh, um, uh, camp or his gang is, is, is getting wider. It's getting wider. Uh, right as to that, as Wiki, Makinde, Fayoshe, George, Ghana, others pull out of presidential campaign. Southern PDP, Southern PDP block, says Atiku failed to honor London agreement with Rivers Governor's camp. I cannot decide I use fate, ex-Vice President replies, a grieved campaign council members, saying probably he cannot just tell IU to step aside. It's not within his powers as a candidate to do so. More from the punch, UNGA, Buhari promises credible polls, seeks debt forgiveness. I think eh, that's an interesting one. Also a picture there of Joe Biden addressing the United Nations General Assembly. Uh, a Pangasan fingers military in 600,000 barrel daily stolen crude. Pangasan fingers military in 600,000 barrel daily stolen crude. Quite interesting. Asu to appeal ruling. Parents want strike ended. Uh, Senate confirms Ariola. New CJN gets agenda. Court sets aside $47 million Paris club or Paris club payment judgment. There's a picture of the... Uh, uh, Minister of Finance uh, uh, and Budget, rightly uh, so. Northern Christians will mobilize against Muslim Muslim ticket, Lawa. Northern Christians will mobilize against Muslim Muslim ticket, uh, hoodlums, raid Ogun communities, kill three police, investigate. We'll come out of that investigation. We hope something will come out. No post conviction bail for Babai Jesha. Court rules. Uh, uh, and fraudsters hack bank transfer or transfer rather 523 million naira to 225 accounts so you have to check your bank balance to see if you're affected that's what i'll say to you all right then let's quickly uh, turn our attention to the daily trust newspaper it talks about uh, the saga that's going on with the pdp right here uh, article to Wiki's camp retrace your steps and that's what is boldly written on the Daily Trust. We won't participate in campaign under IU. Rivers Governor's camp is quoted to say, I mean, when you say the camp, does it also translate uh, to mean that, you know, yes, I'm weak is speaking at the end of the day? A solution coming, the BO teacher is quoted to say, and crisis will benefit APC others. That's what analysts are quoted to say. I mean, that's the obvious. ASU rejects court orders for resumption vows to appeal ruling, and that's uh, another. Shakara remains NNPP's candidate for Kanu Central, INEC, is quoted. Buhari at the UN, I'm leaving legacy of credible elections in Nigeria. Uh, that's okay. Uh, just before we move away from that, you have forex scarcity. Banks suspend international transaction on narrow debit cards. That's a lot. I mean, what happens to uh, a lot of persons? Uh, Kofi, are you on this table? Those who like to shop. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm not on that table, are you? Well, a little bit. A mm, little yeah. on this table. And I know what I mean. Okay. 
it's really going to be very, you know, very, very strange. A, a flood destroys 14,496 farmlands in five Kanu local governments, according to NEMA. Uh, that's NEMA. Ariwala confirmed the chief uh, justice. Chief judge says Supreme Court's short of eight justices, chief judge. Now, 29 dies as Edo records 225 Lassa fever cases. That's the much on the Daily Trust. All right. The last paper for this uh, segment, we have the nation PDP quakes as Wikis group opts out of Atiku's campaign. And they predict that they would um, uh, give prominence to that. Indeed, they, they've done that. PDP quakes as Wikis group kicks uh, opts out of Atiku's campaign. Camp insists IU must quit. Chairman would be forced out, says Atiku. 95.4 million liters of crude oil stolen daily, says government. Nigeria, U.S., Germany, others seal pact on food security. Senate confirms Ariwala as Chief Justice of Nigeria. Dignitaries greet Remy Tinubu at 62. Court order won't stop negotiation with our success in Gigi. In other words, they can still have something out of court. Uh, Shekarao notifies Senate of defection to PDP. Hoodlums, uh, Bagalakiti, SCP, Secretariat. So... Uh, those are the headlines on the nation, front page of the nation. Let's bring in Ezekiel and I took his uh, uh, very well poised and placed position uh, to talk about this this situation, the People's Democratic Party. Uh, what are your thoughts? Atiku is saying, my hands are tight. My hands are tight. And uh, Wiki's camp is growing. Uh, Bode George was uh, in Port Harcourt at Wiki's uh, uh, estate last night. So what are your thoughts on this, sir? All right. Can you hear us, uh, Architect Ezekiel Ngaitu, please? <coughs> All right. Uh, well, we, whilst we try to reestablish connection with him, of course, the network issues is normal, you know, in these circumstances sometimes. Uh, Mercy, it's, it's quite interesting what's going on in, 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 in the People's Democratic Party. You know, well, the, the nation is separate. They stepped it down a bit, moved the PDP coverage uh, to the smaller headlines <laughs> you know but i i just sort of sort of predicted today they're going to come back to make it big and the nation has not disappointed it's in front so, so they're very predictable in your face um but i don't blame i don't blame that paper this is the editorial direction and every newspaper has a choice to decide what editorial direction they want to go in Why not? they're not breaking any law you know but um it's quite interesting now i keep saying wicked's camp is growing you know because i haven't seen Bode george in the port Harcourt since this current um you know uh situation started it's always been uh, Donald Duke. I mean, Donald Duke should basically move his. Uh, yeah, I'm sure he should move his family to Port Harcourt for now because he's been there always, you know. But this is politics. I'm sure these gentlemen know what it takes. It takes a lot of personal sacrifice to get some political decisions go away. All right, uh, is it clear? To, can you hear us? I, I get it that you're back with us. Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. All right, all right. So yes, um, uh, it seems Wiki's pool is is growing larger, wider. Uh, with no less a person than Bodejo joining in, he read the uh, statement after the meeting, uh, marathon meeting that stretched into dawn. Um, but Atiku is saying, my hands are tied. I can't, I can't simply tell you to resign. I don't have that power. What are your thoughts on, on the current situation? Yeah, you know, that of the PDP is a little curious in the sense that um, the PDP largely wanted Atiku. Uh, there's always a gap between election time and non-election time. Election time, there's attention focused on the candidate that they are selling, particularly the presidential. But you see, after election, which is a few months, then there is still party left for you to run. So having to manage the interest between party and election is something that most people don't understand how it works. And uh, I've been a national chairman of a party and I've also been a candidate, so I can feel the two sides of the divide. Now, right, right now, Atiku is in a fix because he is not party, he's a candidate. But at the same time, this is not party time. This is candidate time. And what some people have done in the past, like uh, President Goodluck Jonathan, was when he was having a problem with the party, he decided to set up a parallel body to run his campaign, which was TAM. 
And when you are running your campaign, it's not mandatory, not obligatory for you to run within the party system or structure. That's why you are asked to set up your campaign council. Now, right now, Article has his campaign council set up, but the demand of Wike is on party. So on one hand, Article does not have control over party, but that is storytelling. The fact is that, in a curious way, I do not know why Atiku, that I've known, is being a deft political, you know, maneuverer. The day I've said this, and I say it again, the day that Atiku calls, you know, um, Ayu to his house and says, "My guy, please, I beg you, this thing is getting out of hand. I'm going to win this election. I'll give you this. Can you just do me the favor?" The way that the BOT chairman resigned. The uh, IU can also resign. The constitution says that after you resign, the guy that is the deputy chairman takes over from you is also from the north. Is a simple thing. He also resigns. When they both resign, they can now put in somebody there, after which the party can now appeal to the second person that resigned and say, please, can you come back? And the party's constitution can allow you to come back. So it's an in-house arrangement. I've said this time and time again. But there's something that holds Atiku back, and I really don't understand. And I think the worst mistake he would make, you know, it's already a dent, a damage, because you know, people are starting with this, with this um new wave of person not party. A lot of party loyalists seeing what is going on are starting to say, okay, maybe for presidency, I'll go this way. For governorship, I'll go this way. People are starting to, and you know, there are three boxes that I've checked, you know, and we need to understand. Box one is cash, you know, people who just, they don't care, just pay me. But there's a box two, which is conscience. And then there's a box three, which is intellect. Which Between box two and box three, there are people who are starting to think. Those two boxes didn't used to really take part in election before, and they've, they form about 70% of voters. That's why we always have below 30% turnout. But these people are being activated right now because of the confidence they have in the Beavers and also other players coming in and becoming relevant. For the first time, we are now talking about a three-horse race, a four-horse race. In states, you can actually have a five-horse race. Do you understand me? So people are starting to pick and choose. So the issue of my party, my party, is not as as, as, as as binding as it used to be. So within that context, I don't think that Atiku should take the risk of saying, well, if you like, if you don't like. I think they should just find a way of getting in-house. If they hired me as their consultant, I'll tell you, this problem will be resolved in less than three days. It's a simple thing. Bring down egos. Get down into the room, guys, I beg. Let's get this. Somebody needs to play the fall guy. Somebody needs to stoop to conquer. And that person that needs to stoop to conquer is Mr. Uh, uh, Atiku. And the earlier he takes this statement serious, the better for him. All right. Uh, let's take a look at the leadership newspaper. The president, uh, President Mohammed Buhari, seeks debt pardon for Nigeria and pledges credible elections in 2023. Uh, looking at, you know, the statistics that's been released by the DMO, uh, debt profile is standing at 42.3 trillion naira, and that's a lot. Do you think that this is really a great move uh, of the president right now, you know, in New York, <laughs> uh, asking um, that our debt should be cancelled? What do you make of this? Absolute ridicule. Really? Um, Yes. You see, the way you treat Nigerians should not be the way you think you can treat the international community. These are people who think. These are people who are on your case on a constant basis. You are telling me that you can't account for 4,000 uh, 4, barrels of oil per day. You can't account for it. It just shows that you have no knowledge of accountability or, or you are so wasteful and, and you are asking me to forgive your debt. Number two, the lifestyle that you, you live, those people can tell you the number of people that have come with you on the trip. They can tell you the amount of money you have spent on the trip. They can tell you. 
If you think Nigerians don't know, people know. They can tell you how you've run your budget over the years. They can tell you what your priorities are. They can tell you that you that comes to say that education is uh, the barometer for measuring the future or, uh, in fact, it's the campus that takes any, 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 any society to the next level and then your children are out of school for the past seven months and what are they asking for? You know, this will listen to you and when you come to international, you know, uh, arena and you start to say these things, this guy is just saying, do they, is this guy taking us for a fool? Do they think that we are Nigerians? You know, so there are certain things you shouldn't say. But there's a way you put your house in order. And when you go back there, you say education is such an important thing to us. And we are so, we've done the best we can. But because of this dead stuff, we cannot get much more. Please, can you just allow us give up a phase a kind of um you know structuring where we can deploy the debt that we pay you to fixing the education sector you know or the power sector we want to get the country going there is an argument you put forward based on your antecedents that will get the the, the, the good minded people thinking please let them go back and see how we got the debt forgiveness under president uh, or uh, former president obasanjo and my 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 very very uh, respected senior sister okonjo iweala let them go back and study the things that were done the demands that were requested how they met those demands before you even go to ask you would have started putting your house in order and by the time you reach there, they will say this to be done. You say, check this one, check this one. Okay, because we don't have this. That is the way that the international right? community... Uh, a, a bit of a conversation <laughs> here. You say that uh, the international community is a brotherhood. I mean, if we have 195 countries thereabout, and so you have 183 who are members of the United Nations, you want to say 184 thereabout, then it, it, it's a community. I mean, it's like the brothers, family, the world come together. And if you have a problem, there's nothing wrong sharing with a brother. Afterwards, once upon a time, we also enjoyed, you know, debt cancellation under the, uh, you know, former president, Lucia Gunabasanjo's administration, which was headed by uh, economic council or team was headed by Ongozio Konjewela. And so um, is there anything bad if the president is asking, you know, that that cancellation should be considered, especially... You are, you, are, you are taking me back two, three steps. I've said this before. The international community, they have the money they worked for. Money but I'm saying earned. that it's a brotherhood. That's my point. I mean, yeah, when countries you come together... Brother. Let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you. If you have two, two, two siblings, a, a brother and a sister, and this sister is very serious, takes academics really serious and everything. And then this brother doesn't want to go to school, he's very recalcitrant, he's very irresponsible and everything. And he has some money to send one of them to school. It's a brotherhood, it's a family. You send your sister to school All right. and not your brother. Okay. And you okay. tell your brother, if you just behave yourself and you show some level of interest in education, maybe next session, I can think about you. All right, that, all right. That, that, Ezekiel, yeah, to be, we have to go. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to, to interrupt you, sir. Uh, but we, we're out of time. Uh, we should talk some more about some other issues. But we'll have you again soon. Thank you so much for your time and uh, have a fantastic day. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Have a much. lovely day, Thank both you of you. Thank you, too. All right, uh, we have a look at what happened today in history. We'll take that. And when we come back, we dive straight into our first major conversation. Stay with us.